In this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the probability distribution function for the number of heads within two tosses of a coin. So first, we have to be sure that we understand how to get the probability function before we get the probability distribution function. So the probability function looks like this. Let's take a look at the options. You're tossing a coin. Okay? So x is the random variable, and it represents the number of heads within two tosses of a coin. Okay? Let's mark here in my hands. Okay. And then f little is the probability. So for example, you can get zero heads, and that can happen in one of four ways. Or you can get one head, and that can happen in two of four ways. Or we can get two heads, and that can happen once again in one of four ways. And if you're not convinced, just do a little tree for yourself. Okay, so there you go. So this is a head, tail, head, tail, head, tail. So the number, if you get a head followed by a head, you see that that can happen in one of four ways, right? There are four possibilities. A head followed by a tail, that's one out of four. A tail followed by a head, that's again one out of four. And then a tail followed by a tail is again one out of four. So. X is the number of heads within two tosses. So if it's zero, the only way that can happen is if you get a tail and a tail. That's one out of four. If you get one head, that can happen either when you get head tail or tail head. That's a quarter and a quarter, which is two quarters. Two heads can happen once again. Head followed by a head, which is only one out of four. Okay. And another interpretation here that's useful, of course, is that of a... Let me make this orangish here for you. Okay. So draw an x axis. We're going to mark this as 0, mark this as 1, and mark this as 3. So now to get 1 quarter for 0, right? That is that probability. This will be our 1 quarter, 1 box, 1 space. Okay? 2 quarters is 2 of those. And once again, one quarter is another one marked like this. Okay? So this is what's known as the probability function of the random variable x. And now, using this, we construct the probability distribution function. So this process is a little different. This is little f. Now we are going to talk about big F. First step in this process is to construct a convenient coordinate system. So let me do that right now. A vertical axis and a horizontal axis. There we are. Label or scale the vertical axis in convenient units. So because our probability probabilities are going up like quarters, call them quarters, okay? So this would be one, two, three, four, like this. And then let's keep the same spacing as for this one for the horizontal. So this would be our zero. Three boxes over will be our one. Three boxes over will be our two. Okay. So what you see plotted where I'm pointing now, that is little f. What we are about to plot is big F. How do we do it? We count up. To the left of zero, there is no probability present. And you can see also in the graph, no probability, no little bars to the left of zero. 
So draw a line, draw a hole at zero. At zero itself, there's a jump of one quarter. So you jump up one quarter, and then you draw a line horizontally up to the one. But at the one, draw a hole and jump up. Okay? Two, three fourths. How do we know that we should jump by three fourths? Because when you look at the probability function, right? To the left of zero, nothing. At zero, there's a jump of one quarter. At one, there's a jump of two quarters. So let's imagine taking this little segment and placing it over here. That causes the jump in the probability. Okay. And then you draw another one up to two. Draw a hole at two. And then jump up by another one quarter. And make that solid. And then you do that, okay? It goes off forever to positive infinity. So this is the probability distribution function. And the key point, remember, is at each of these, there's a jump equal to whatever the segment length is that you see here. Or that you see in the t-chart. Okay. So for example at 0 there's a jump of 1 fourth. At 1 there's a jump of 2 over 4. And at 2 there's a jump of 1 over 4. That's the spacing, the separation between these things. Okay, It's equal to whatever probabilities you see here. If you like you can also think of the little segments that we've drawn here. Okay. So this is a picture of the probability distribution function. Now let's actually write the function. So this is a piecewise defined function. It looks like this. Big F of X equals big curly brace. So zero between Negative infinity is less than x, which is less than zero, okay? So no probability between negative infinity and zero. Then there's a jump of one-fourth, so that's one-fourth, and that holds from zero, move your finger over, that holds from zero up to one. It includes zero, it's solid, it does not include one. So then you write 0 is less than x, which is less than 1 exclusively, does not include 1. Then, you see in the next one is 2 fourths. So 2 out of 4, and this holds between 1 and 2. It includes the 1, but it excludes the 2. And lastly, after the 2, you see that it's 1 always. So in this case, you can write that 2 is less than or equal to x. There we are. So this is the whole process of constructing a probability distribution function for the case of the number of heads within two tosses of a coin. The first step, make sure you can construct a probability function. Once that is built up, then you may use a visual aid like this one here. You may also graph the probability function like this. Then you switch from little f to big F. And then you start accumulating the probabilities, adding them up. To the left of zero, nothing. At zero, there's a jump of one quarter. At one, there's a jump of two quarters. At two, there's a jump of one fourth. And then it's 1 after that. And a couple things that you should know, which are always true, are these. The jumps here correspond to the entries in the chart. This function is continuous from the right, which means the following. The solids are always on the upper level and not on the lower level.
This is known as the probability distribution function. And that is just about it. So the next video I will do something similar, but for the case of uh, the number of heads within three tosses of a coin. Thank you for watching.